Amen. 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 That song, uh, we can sing it. Say it's my season to be blessed. But then do you believe it? And are you walking in it? Amen. And what I discovered about life is it may stay to start off a little rough, but you keep hanging in there and keep trusting God. And it'll change after a little while. Amen. Amen. So if you claiming something and believing and, and, and profess it, then walk in it. Amen. amen. Walk in it. Amen. You don't know when. Or what time it is, because God's on a different time schedule than what we are. All right. We want it now. He said it ain't time now. Amen. So, whatever you're asking for God, just believe that it's going to happen. Amen. If you don't believe it, then there ain't no need to ask for it. All right. Amen. Amen. Today I want to talk about uh, when God's trying to tell you something. You got your Bibles, turn to Exodus chapter 3. Exodus chapter 3, verse 11, and reads, it says, But Moses said to God, Who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and that I should bring the children of Israel out of Egypt? So he said, I will certainly, this is God said, I will certainly be with you, and this shall be a sign to you that I have sent you. When you have brought the people out of Egypt, you shall serve God on this mountain. Then Moses said to God, Indeed, when I come to the children of Israel and say to them, The God of your fathers has sent me to you, and they say to me, What is his name, and what shall I say to them? And God said to Moses, I am who I am. And he said, Thus you shall say to the children of Israel, I am has sent me to you. Amen. Amen. So we can be seated. Amen. And um, every day we live, God is trying to tell us something. Amen. And whether we pay attention or not is something else. And everything we go through, God is talking to us. But unless we're in a relationship with God, we're not going to receive what God has for us. Amen. Every day you. Get up, touch your, turn your alarm off, God's talking to you. Every day you get dressed and go to work, God's talking to you. Every day you get out and start your car up, God's talking to you, saying you don't need a new battery. You can drive, amen. Every day you go to work, you get some little money in your account, God's talking to you, saying, hey, aren't I providing for you, amen. And even when trouble hits you, God is still talking to you, amen. And sometimes we get hard-headed. That a lot of times we don't like the message that God has given us. Amen. And we turn a blind ear. We turn a deaf ear to what God has to say to us. Amen. But God comes no matter what time of day it is, whether it's morning, noon, or night. God's talking to us. He may talk to you through somebody. He may talk to you through a commercial. He may talk to you through the radio. He may talk to you through whatever you're listening to, but God's talking to you. Now, are we in tune with what God is trying to tell us? Amen. And I bring that up because those 30 days I was gone, God was talking to me. And I'm going to be quite honest with you. I wanted to leave. God said, ain't time. Amen. So when God says, I, you and I have to pay attention to what God is talking to us about. Amen. And in life, God is, let me back it up for a minute. We will listen to everybody else but God. We will listen to our friends first before we listen to God. We'll listen to our boss before we listen to God. But when God's talking to us, God ain't loud. Me and my wife, we were, we were doing something, and, and, and somebody was saying that they were a prophetess or something, and they were loud, obnoxious, rude. A prophetess don't act like that. A child of God don't act like that. 
No, God comes, God talks to you in a small voice. Calm, cool, and collected. That's how God talks. I ain't never heard of God getting upset. Even when Sodom and Gomorrah was messing up, God didn't raise his voice. Even when we mess up, God don't raise his voice. God just says, hey, man, what you doing? Why you doing it? Amen. So, this morning, when God's trying to tell you something, and believe it or not, God talks to sinners too. Sometimes as Christians, we don't think God talks to sinners. Well, look at you. You was a sinner. Look at me. I was a sinner. God talked to us, didn't he? Huh? he God got our attention, didn't he? So how come God can't get a sinner's attention? If God hadn't talked to us, we wouldn't be where we are today. Amen? No, we wouldn't be. And how many of y'all seen the color purple? I know y'all did, right? With Oprah Winfrey, right? And whoop a good word. And at the end of the clip, the girl's walking to church. She go to her daddy's church. And she walks in. Her daddy's surprised, number one, because she was a club goer. She walks in and she says, see, daddy, even sinners have souls. See, we think that God can only talk to us who we think are way up here. God is on everybody's level. God's on whatever level you need him to be on. God does not show favoritism to anybody. He's on whatever level. He's on the drunk's level. He's on the prostitute level. Amen. He's on the cheat level. He's on, he's on adulterous level. He's on whatever level you need him to be on. He's there. He's there. Our problem is we don't recognize when God's trying to talk to us. Amen. Moses hears up on the mountain and he see a burning bush. He go over there and talk to God. And, 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 and I'm sure at first Moses said, this can't be real. So why are you talking to me? Huh? Moses didn't think very highly of himself. But God just told him, I am who I am. All you got to do is just be obedient to what I ask you to do. And that's what God's telling us. All we got to do is be obedient to what he asks us to do. Amen? Amen? That's all. Joshua in chapter 1. Joshua, God tells Joshua, my, my servant Moses is dead. And what I need you to do is pull yourself together and finish the assignment I started with Moses. Because as I was with Moses, I'm going to be with you. That's what he told Joshua. Joshua recognized who God's voice was, and he listened to it. Amen? Amen. Daniel, and I, I think it's uh, chapter 10, Daniel sends up a prayer. Prayer gets hung up behind what I call enemy lines in the spiritual realm. And the angel tells Daniel, hey, from the time it left your lips, God heard your prayer, but it got tied up. Because the enemy didn't want you to get blessed with that request that you were making. But God heard your request and was held up for 21 days. So my question for us is, when God is trying to tell us something and it gets holed up, and we, what do you do while you're waiting? Hmm? Juanita Bottom had a song where I said, I don't mind waiting. Yeah. But in the waiting process, you have to do something. In the waiting process, you don't become stagnated and you just don't live. Amen. You still have to serve God. You still have to be faithful to God. And you still have to trust God. And that song says, I don't mind waiting. She describes her situation as she's going through life. And I believe what she was describing, number one, number one was, what I got down here, I got this up. Uh, you got to look at your situation to see where you are in life. You got to look and see what's around you and what's influencing you to do what you do. Amen. She and you, when you're in a waiting stage and you, you're trying to listen to God's voice, you got to look, number one, who's delivering the message. Hmm? We want validation from everybody but God. And I'm under the firm belief, and y'all might think I'm crazy, y'all might not, and y'all might disagree with me. That's fine. Because you know what I learned over 30 days? I don't care no more. I don't care no more because your relationship with God is yours. I'm not in that. Don't want to be in that. I got issues of my own in my own relationship I'm dealing with God. 
Amen. But if God's talking to me, he's talking to me. He ain't going to tell you to tell me what I need to do. When he can talk to me himself. And if I say I'm a child of the most high king, I, I should be talking to God. So I got to look at my own situation from within and see where am I at? Who's giving me the message? A lot of times we don't like the messenger who's delivering the message because we don't want to receive it from, from that individual. Sometimes God will bring the most unlikeliest people to bring you what he wants you to hear so he can get your attention. Yes, he will. We've got to look at our situation. Look at what God is trying to tell us. Look at why God is telling us that and evaluate where am I at in life. Because where you are may not be where God wants you to be. Maybe he wants you to change some things, but you don't want to change. The only reason David understood what he did with Bathsheba was wrong because God sent a prophet to him. Up until that point, David thought he didn't do nothing wrong. He was living his life. Tell the prophet, told him what happened to Nathan. Then, then David said, well, he ought to fix that. He said, I'm talking about you. Now, he went and he fixed it right away. But the collateral damage was already done to his family. Because God said, the, the sword ain't never going to leave your house, David. And it didn't. So we got to look at where we are in life, number one. We got to look to see who we're talking to. Number two, we got to listen. We don't listen. I don't listen. My wife will tell you that in a minute. I got to, I, I don't listen. You got to look, you got to listen to what God is telling you. you now, and, and you know what I learned about God? God will never tell you anything that's going to hurt you mentally and physically. He would tell you some stuff that would hurt you, hurt your pride. But he's not going to tell you anything that's going to put you in danger. No. We've got to listen with a good ear. We've got to listen intensively of what they're saying. Amen. And what God is saying. If God's saying, no, don't do it, you don't do it. If God said, no, don't hang around, you don't hang around. If God said, no, don't be, don't be. But we think we know more than God, don't we? Let's be honest. Yeah, we do. God ain't as smart as y'all sitting up in here. No, he ain't. That's how we think sometimes. We know more than God. But God is way smarter than any of us is ever going to be in our lives. No matter what deeds we get, we ain't never going to be on God's level. We ain't never going to be up there where he is. Amen. God is too smart. Too wise to be wrong. So we got to listen at what God is trying to tell us. God doesn't force us. God doesn't beat us over the head with the word. God doesn't beat us over the head. Somebody, I want you to do it and you do it this way. That. No, God gives us a thing called free will. Free will has gotten a lot of us in free trouble. So you got to evaluate what's going on. Amen. You got to look, you got to listen, then you got to learn. School teachers will tell you that doing the same thing repetitively, did I say that right? Repetitively will get you to learn something, which means you got to do it over and over and over and over. Amen. I know when I was in school, I, I just didn't go over an algebra problem one time and I got it. No, you had to go over algebra problems several times, sometimes a couple weeks before you got it. So you had to learn it, didn't you? Hmm? So we have to learn from life. We have to learn from other We have to learn from God. And how we learn? We get in the Bible. How we learn? We read for ourselves. How do we learn? We, we get in there, we read it, then we apply it, and we see how other folk are living. Amen. We see how other folk are living, amen? And if we're not doing that, we are in trouble, amen? We're in trouble. He says, you got to learn, okay. Isaiah 45 and 22 says, let me, let me turn that for you real quick because I wrote that down.
Isaiah 45 and 22 says, Look to me and be saved. God is saying, whatever we need in life, we ought to look to him no matter what. To the smallest, to the largest, we ought to turn to God first and don't turn to people first. Amen? We get advice from everybody but God. We don't go to God first. We use God's second, third, fourth, and fifth, or last option. It's like on a sports team, and you call a play. You say, well, we'll run this play since it's the last option, and we'll throw a Hail Mary. But God is not a Hail Mary. God is our first option, should be our first option with what we do in life. Amen? Amen. Psalms 121 says, uh, I look to the hills where come my help. All my help comes from the Lord, right? So look to where you can get the help. Not look where you think somebody's going to help you. Amen? Because can I let you in on a, on a secret this morning? People will let you down. People will say, yeah, 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 whatever, whatever. Then when you look for them, they ain't there. God ain't like that. God don't lie. If God make you a promise, he's going to keep it. Amen? Amen. 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 Isaiah 55 and 2. And 2 says, let me, let me, let me read this for uh, Listen here, y'all. 55 and 2 says, Shake yourself from the dust. Arise, sit down, O Jerusalem. Loosen yourself from the bondage of your neck. A captive. What God is saying, listen, we got to understand that, hey, we got to cut all the other stuff out. This walk that we own is a very particular walk. And it is. You can't let everything in this walk. You can't, because soon you let a crack in the door, the devil's going to come in. Soon you leave the door open, the devil's coming in. Soon you let your mind go, the devil's coming in. And before you know it, he done came in and took over and running everything that you thought you was in charge of. And just so you know, we ain't in charge of anything. We're not even in charge of ourselves. We can say tomorrow I'm going to do this, tomorrow I'll come around the Lord to rearrange everything, and we won't be able to do anything. No, because God's in charge. Look, listen, and learn. And as we get older, we don't want to learn too much, do we? I'm being honest with you because we think we know everything. Yeah, we do. We think we know everything, but we don't know anything. But what we do know is that God's in charge. God's in control. And he's running the whole world. He's doing everything. And I know we see what's going on in the world. And I heard somebody say this the other day. Uh, I was, on one of them Sundays I was off, I was watching a, a preach on TV. I don't get a chance to do that too much. I watched a preach on TV. And the preacher said, uh, I know when our parents was alive, grandparents were alive, they said these, they were the last days. But you look around, and he said, God ain't, he said, it ain't much longer before God comes back. And I believe that, it ain't. So the question is, will you be ready? That's the question, will you be ready? What's that song by Chicago Mass Choir said, I pray we all be ready? And they come, and, and, and she talks about catching people in different situations. We got to be ready because God's coming. He's coming, he's, and, and, and we have speeded it up. Amen. So will you be ready? How do you get ready? Accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Then once you accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, work in his kingdom. Be obedient to what he asked you to do. Amen. Amen. And then don't waver from what God told you to do. When God does come back, and I'm going to be honest with you, when he come back, I pray I'm gone. I don't want to be left on earth during the rapture because it's going to be ugly. It's going to be ugly, and it is. And y'all may say, man, pastor crazy. No, you do. hey, I don't like pain. I don't want, and I sure don't like to see my loved ones in pain. Don't. You just got to be ready for what God it's going to do eventually. And yeah, we speed up the process. Yeah, we jacked everything all up. 
but we're still here, which means we got a chance. Which means we pray for those who are in charge, who's making their decisions. Amen. We pray for them that they would come to the senses and fix some things that they're dealing with. Amen. School starts Monday. School starts tomorrow. In Savannah, I think it started Friday, I think. But look, everything around us, it seems like it's crumbling down. Everything. And you want to know why? I believe this is why, because the church has lost its influence. The, the, the church has lost its power that it once had. Because the church has turned into a money-making machine. And the church has turned into too political. Instead of standing up on what's right and not caring what people think. Amen. Instead of standing on what the word of God says. Amen. Until the church gets that voice back, and, and, I, and I commend those states who put the Ten Commandments back in the school, and, the, and that, hey, that's a start. But still, people still got to do it. People still got to do it, amen. But we, as a Christian body, should be leading from the front. But a lot of times we lead from the rear because we don't want folk to look at us differently. Well, they already look at you differently already. Because if you're a child of God, it's already all over you. You can't hide it no matter what you try to do. You can't hide it. So your mind will do what's right for the Lord. Amen? When God's trying to tell us something, God don't come in a, in a heavy voice. God don't come loud, obnoxious. No, God just says, hey, Elijah, what you doing in the cave, man? Why are you hiding? And then us, like Elijah, we start complaining, don't we? I'm the only one that's living right, God. Ain't nobody else out there living right. I'm by myself. Hmm? That's what Elijah said, right? And God said, no, pick yourself together, pick yourself up, and let's go. That's how God talks to us, amen? Let's do what we're supposed to do, amen? Look here, let me share this with you. Don't turn the TV on no more. Don't turn the news on anymore. I'm serious about that. I mean, you can do what you're going to do anyway. But it messes up your mind. It seems like everything is going down. But the word ain't going down. But it seems like our society is going down. Nothing but a lot of negativity, 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 negativity. That's also on TV. So, if you can help it, don't turn TV on to watch no news. Because all it does is just beats you down. Makes you feel bad. Say, man, how did we get to this point? And we got to this point because we let it get to that point. We say, well, it ain't bother us, it ain't coming down our street. But, when, but what doesn't bother you indirectly, I mean, directly is going to bother you indirectly sooner or later. Sooner or later. So, we're standing. Here's the bow. Now, if you're listening on Facebook and YouTube, first of all, let me tell you this. Go find yourself a Bible-based church. Find yourself a church where you can go in and grow spiritually, amen. Doesn't matter how big or how small the church is. Find yourself a church where you can reach out and, and touch folk, amen. And if you're not saved today, all you got to do is accept the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Say, Lord, I'm a sinner, been a sinner. I need you to come into my life. And when you come into my life, I promise, Lord, I'll make you the head and not the tail. And I will serve you from this day forward. Because all you have to do is open the door and the Lord will come in. Doesn't mean your life is going to get easier. If anything, it's going to get harder. Because you're making a public declaration that you're on the Lord's side. Just the ABCs. Accept the fact that Jesus is the Son of God. Believe in your heart that he came down through 42 generations. And he got up on the third 
today. And he sits at the right side of God now as an intercessor for us. And once Jesus gets you in his palm, can't nothing pluck you out of that. You are there. It's up to you. You are there. You're not going to have it all together. Don't wait to say, I'm going to get it all together. When I get this together, that together, I'm going to accept Jesus. Don't wait too late. We're all work in progress. Perhaps you're looking for a church home. If you're not in Walterville, Hinesville, or Allen Hirsch, find a church home where you can grow. If you're in this area, come by 1002 Thomas Road. We would love to have you, amen? We would. Perhaps you're looking to get baptized. Baptism it was, is an outward expression of an inward change that's taking place. That you're not ashamed to be identified as the son or daughter of Christ himself. God is faithful. God is trustworthy. And God will honor your faith in the end. And your obedience. Just trust the Lord with everything that you have. No matter how big or small, turn everything over to God and watch God work it for you. He will do it for you. We've asked these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You can be seated and going home. A couple years ago, James Cleveland sang a song talking about, Lord, just do it. Yes. Sister Martin, I like she's waiting on that to go way back on that. He said, Lord, just do it for me. He didn't want it tomorrow. He didn't want it next month, next year. He said, right now. And whatever you need, and I know we, 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 we say, Lord, bless me with this, however you want. Sometimes you got to say right now. Because you need it right now. And there's no shame in saying right now. There's no harm in saying right now. And I think God will look at that as a sense of urgency on your part. Doesn't mean sense of urgency on his part. But you never know, amen. God works when he wants to work, how he wants to work. But maybe he was just waiting on you to utter it right now. He knew you needed it right now. He was just waiting on you to say it right now. Doesn't mean that you're greedy. Doesn't mean that you don't want to wait. Doesn't mean that you know. It just means that, hey, your situation requires the Lord right now. Right now. And in some cases, there is some right nows up in here. So if you're in there, just keep telling the Lord right now, Lord. Right now. And watch the Lord work it out for you. Amen. He will work it out. He will. If he don't work it out, come back and talk to me offline. Everybody don't need to know your business. Come back and talk to me offline. But, uh, but if you tell him right now, he, he, he's going to move. And when he moves, you ain't got to tell nobody. All you do is just say, thank you, Lord. And then once he does that, then serve him with a new heart. Serving with a new heart, a heart of gratitude. Serving in a heart of thankfulness. Amen? Amen, amen, amen. So, anybody got anything else? Next Sunday, I, I, I got a, I got a, I got a, me and my wife, we got to go to Maryland next Sunday. I'm having a family reunion next Sunday. Amen. Uh, but that's it. That's it for me for the year. I'll be here the rest of the year and next year. I'll be here, amen. But I wanna, I wanna thank y'all for allowing me to take off those thirty days, amen. Uh, I needed that. 
It felt good. Amen. And uh, it did. It felt good. This is sleep in. You know what I'm saying? Now, don't get me wrong. I was tuning y'all in, yeah, but from my bed. You know. <laughs> you know, I'm yeah, but it, but it felt good. And I'm going to thank y'all. Amen. And, 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 and what that tells me is just here, y'all. And, and, and no one is indispensable. No one. When we get to that point, we think we're indispensable. God's going to move us. God's going to move us. Amen. So uh, thank you. You know, thank you. And um, anybody got anything else? You want to tell them a little bit about your trip, huh? Okay, she didn't want to. All uh, right, she didn't want to. She didn't want to. Whew. All right, we're standing. We're ready to go home. God, we thank you, Lord, for this opportunity to come out and worship you, God. Thank you for all of those who are here, all of those who tune in by way of Facebook and YouTube, God. And God, we'd ask, Lord, that you continue to bless us, guide us, and give us strength where we're weak at, God. Allow us to encourage somebody as we walk this walk. Allow us to be a, a, a bridge to somebody who needs some help. Allow us to be a light to somebody who's lost. Allow us to just be kind, considerate, and generous to those who are not of the Christian faith yet but working on it, God. Now, Lord, we ask as we leave this place, give us a trial of mercy that we may return back to our homes and find them as we left them. Bless us, guide us, and give us strength. In Jesus' name we pray. And the people of God says, Amen, Amen, and Amen. Go in peace. Amen.